Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about movable block entities again. And I got Methods here as well, who's gonna assist in the video. Hey Methods. Hey. So movable block entities, that's something we wanted to have in a game for quite a while. But yeah, because of some technicalities, it wasn't added yet. It's actually a part of Bedrock Edition. And today we just wanna advertise again that this would be nice if you would have that in Java as well. So what is a moving block entity? I already prepared all the affected blocks that at the moment can't be moved because of a technicality. So every block that has MBT data can't be moved. So including, for example, the daylight sensor, chests where you can store items in, furnace, dropper dispenser, the hopper, of course, then the lectern, jukebox, also the new B blocks. So the bees could be inside. So a lot of MBT data there. Then also the campfire, since you can put yeah, potatoes on it. The brewing stand, the sign as well, also can't be moved at the moment. Then the, yeah, the loom block, smithing table, the other two furnace types, the barrel, the banner, the conduit, and the beacon. So to know your name actually made a mod for this, for Java 1.12, quite a while ago. I think it's about three years. Then we actually have this feature already in carpet mod. And yeah, it works great, as you can see. Yeah, uh, increase the push limit here as well. You can move those blocks and it's not too complicated. So I think to know, spend about two weeks coding this and it works pretty well. So maybe one, uh, yeah, one note. So we could move all of those blocks if movable or block entries would be in a game, but there's still a couple of blocks that can't be moved. So there are the obsidian type blocks that can't be moved um, and portal frames. Then it's actually quite interesting. There are heavy metal blocks in the game. The, what is that called again? The grindstone, grindstone. And the anvil also can't be moved because they're heavy metal. Then of course the command block, the structure block can't be moved. Uh, end portal, end portals, end gateways, spawners wouldn't be able to be moved. Uh, the enchantment table and the ender chest because it's obsidian. So this, those blocks still can't be moved if you enable the movable block entities. Um, some blocks, we can actually change the state, like the cauldron, which are kind of similar, for example, to the campfire, can already be moved because they don't have MBT data. They just have a, a block state change if you would fill them up with water. So you already have this in a game, but it's just this technicality that it doesn't work with the blocks with MBT data. Right, so we're really convinced uh, of this feature. We just want to show you some nice examples of what it can do with this feature. So it's really a, a sandboxy feature. Uh, movable block entities alone are not really helpful, but in combination with a lot of other blocks, they become quite interesting. All right, Mephils, you want to explain a bit what we prepared? Okay, so the first little thing we prepared is just a super simple block swapper, which I think a lot of people would love that to be able to just have this hidden in their wall and be able to switch around their furnaces. And yeah, I think that's about it with this thingy. I've also made a little bit more of a complex one over here. So mm -hmm. this swaps five blocks in total, where we can really swap through a lot of things like brewing stand, a furnace, a chest, a lectern, and a jukebox. A jukebox, yeah. I think Mumbo Jumbo would like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Then next example, it's also yeah, really helpful for a lot of redstone contraptions. We've actually been playing with the movable block entities on our skyblock world for over a year now. No problems so far. And even for basic contraptions, you come up with new ways of doing it. Here we have a simple item filter. So this would filter the red sand just by pushing up the hopper. So every time you got a red sand block, the hopper is pushed up. If you have another block, or item, then it just goes through the system. So even, yeah, <laughs> you could redesign really the basic contraptions again, and a lot of new ideas really pop up when working with the mover block entities. Here, for example, is also a moving furnace array. I think this is also quite nice. Instead of distributing the items, uh, we just <laughs> push the furnaces around, and they would yeah be filled up by just two hoppers. It's just different way of doing it. I think it's also quite nice. All right, so what's next, Methods? Uh, over here, I just made a very crude and simple item splitter. So instead of using redstone logic to distribute items into these two hoppers, we can just fill them into this chest. 
and turn the whole thing on and the items will be equally distributed. Yeah, it's just lots of new ways to do stuff. All right, then next one. Yeah, for example, brewing system, instead of bringing all the ingredients uh, through hoppers to the brewing stand, you could also just put them in one barrel and park that here on top of the brewing stand. So we prepared it, got some ingredients here in those hoppers, the barrel would be filled up and then yeah, we could brew in this case um, that strength potions, splash strength potions. Okay, then next one is a favorite of mine. I was working in a factory once where they had a paternoster storage, it was called. Uh, where you can basically swap through rows of boxes. And you could do something similar in Minecraft. So you could swap through yeah, chests here. So you could save, uh, store some items in there and then just cycle through them with uh, a simple piston feed tape. So I think this would be really nice to have in, yeah, in the base. Alright, then one of the most powerful combinations would be movable block entities and dispensers, of course. Uh, here we got the first example. We could fill those up with um, bone meal and bone meal the seeds here. Okay, we got a flying machine that would do that. So I have to bone meal normal wheat seeds up to four times to make sure they're fully grown. So that's why we got two dispensers that are activated twice each time. In the back we can also do automatic harvesting using the hopper minecart inside of the end rod. So there's a lot of nice ideas that you could implement in the Minecraft world just by these features. would be <laughs> pretty nice. Lots of things you can do. Okay, um, what's the next? I think we have some more flying machines. Yeah, this is something I've already shown in a video once uh, for the Skyblock world. This would be a movable, movable cobblestone generator. So at the moment, you can kind of move water sources already in vanilla using the waterlocked stairs. Always the problem that you can't move lava at all. But if you would have the movable block entities, you could use the dispenser with a lava bucket inside. And you just have a clever flying machine that every time you got a new cobblestone generator, activates the dispenser again, sucks up the lava and then moves one block forward. So this would be yeah, quite fun. Lots of nice applications for especially technical minecrafters uh, with you know, just creating stone walkways or even maybe a compl com more complex structure, I think of a piston bolt, this could be achieved um, with this here. Right, then, yeah, also another thing, you could move your beacons with the movable block entities as well. So instead of having to uh, completely build up your beacon each time, you could just move it completely with the base. So it would also be a quite nice feature, especially if you maybe could have a yeah, two-way flying machine, so I could um, also bring it back to the initial position. This would be quite nice in case you don't have a lot of beacons. Alright, then we got more examples. Yeah, maybe just a, a silly one here. Could just fill up <laughs> dispenser, some fire charges. And of course, move a block entries in combination with dispenser would be a great replacement for TNT duping. That's something you can only do with TNT duping, unfortunately, which is of course a bit cheaty. But yeah, we could do the same. Think about a world eater or trench maker or a quarry. Also with legit TNT, if only we could move the dispenser. And you can also see another feature that was implemented by to know to name. Um, double chests can be moved um, as one block. So it's basically a, just a slime block code copied to the double chest. Yeah, as you can see here, it moves as one block. So it would also be quite nice to have this feature. Uh, it's also really helpful, but it's something different. In case we would get movable talent, this would be nice to get that as well. All right, we got one last example. That's a bit advanced one. You can also use an old uh, vanilla bug in order to get a block placer. So you can actually have the snow to form the snow ge golem a bit offset and the dispenser would still place the carved pumpkin. But this only works with the combination of the snow here. So as you can see, if you don't have it, then it wouldn't place um, the carved pumpkin. So we can use this to make a pumpkin floor builder as well, which is quite fun. So let's launch this machine. 
it is a three-way flying machine just with a pumpkin dispenser here and it will go back and forth and make us a, a pumpkin floor so it would also be a quite nice all right so those were some nice examples of what you can do with it now we also want to again emphasize that it wouldn't be super hard to implement it and it's also relatively bug free so methods can demonstrate it okay so as mentioned before this ran for over one year on our skyblock server and we have it since three years in 112 as well and we tried very hard to break the system we tried very hard to do with it and we never had any success so here i just built up the simple bedrock movable tile entity duping mechanism where you just step on a pressure plate open a chest grab out the item while it's being moved this does not work in this version at all any other way to try and dupe with this item here or with movable tile entities does not work there are no major bugs with it that would cause any bigger problems and yeah, that's about it. Just wanted to mention that, that we do not have all of these bugs that Bedrock Edition has. All right, now we got to know to know him, the mod author here, and he's going to explain how it works exactly. Yeah. So normally when the piston pushes a block, it has to first check if the block is movable. So chests are normally not movable, but if I mod it in, so it just says the chests are movable now and you can push them. But there's... Of course, a second problem that could occur. That's also why they are not movable in vanilla. So if you look into the inventory, there are currently items inside. And those items would be normally lost if you push them away. So what we have to do is get the chest inventory, so the tile entity of the chest, and attach it to the moving piston at the moment when we create it. So um, And then the block is moving over. And when it arrives here, the uh, the moving block places the chest back down and the tile entity of the chest as well. And this is how we preserve uh, the chest inventory after the pushing so we don't lose it. Okay, thanks a lot to know. Okay, I hope you found this presentation of the movable block entities interesting. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about it. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.